Hey folks, I got some sports drink here. Sports drink has electrolytes. What's an electrolyte? We got to talk about that. And we got to talk about the three kinds of chemical reactions which occur in water. Basically, they can all be boiled down to three kinds of reactions. But first, some more foundation. What dissolves in water and how do we know? So today we're going to talk about electrolytes and solubility in water right now. Howdy everybody, howdy, how to the D, Mike here, gonna drop some truth bombs on you about electrolytes. And so first we should define what is an electrolyte. You can kind of tell by the name electro. Electrolytes are compounds which when dissolved in water will conduct electricity. Why is that? Well, let's take this little, I got props today. Got bunches of props. That's what you call in science a salt shaker. And if you were to take solid salt, it does not conduct electricity. You could dip two electrodes in it, it will not pass a current between them. And that's because the ions are not mobile. However, when you put it in water, now we have a new way to symbolize this, NaCl, AQ means aqueous, means dissolved in water for anything. But what's really going on here is that's sort of a shorthand, all right? What's really going on is we could represent that differently. Na plus aqueous, because you know, since you're experts in formulas, that NaCl is really a combination of an Na plus and a Cl minus, because that is an ionic compound. So we have two ways to write this, and we'll give them names here. We would call this the molecular form of writing an equation. Now why would you do that? It's shorter. That's the shorter way to do it. You require less characters. The reader would know, oh, that's really not together as NaCl. It's really split up into its ionic form. And if I wanted to sort of demonstrate that more clearly, you can bust them up into the end. Both of those are saying the same thing. And so it depends on what your needs are. Is your need to be short or is your need to be very demonstrative of what's actually in a solution? Because here you can see charged particles are in that solution. And then the charged particles can flow just like electrons do through a wire. And that's what will conduct electricity in an electrolyte solution. So what is an electrolyte? An electrolyte is or includes any ionic compound. Now pay attention here. This is pretty important. Any ionic compound which dissolves in water is an electrolyte. Now you might say, well, does everything dissolve in water? Nope. That's what we're going to talk about next. Not everything dissolves in water that is an ionic compound. Some things don't. And luckily we have some nice tools to use to help you figure out what's going to dissolve in water and what's not. So let's talk about what isn't an electrolyte. What isn't an electrolyte would be something called a non-electrolyte. So, and I can give you a little bit of a sort of pattern of what those are. But let's use an example first. Well, obviously, if an electrolyte is electrically conductive when you dissolve it in water, a non-electrolyte does not conduct electricity when it dissolves in water. So let's take an example that we talked about last time. C12H22O11. You can go and do this experiment at home. You can put that in water and it will dissolve. However, it will not bust into separate ions because it is a molecular 
compound. And so there is no other way to write it but the molecular form because it doesn't have any ions. Now you see the difference is NaCl is ionic, C12H22O11 is molecular or covalent. And so most, most things that are molecular compounds are non-electrolytes. So today we're going to talk about the electrolytes because that leads into two different kinds of chemical reactions, which would be the next two videos or lessons that we do. So let's answer this question here. How do we know what dissolves in water and what doesn't? That's where we need some solubility rules. Next. Alrighty, folks, let's talk about some terminology. When we say the term soluble, we mean that it dissolves in something else. And for water, we would mean uh, greater than one gram per 100 milliliters of water. We say it's soluble. Salt, NaCl, is soluble because it has a solubility. I've, I just happen to remember it. You can look this stuff up. At room temperature, it's soluble to the tune of 35.7 uh, grams per 100 milliliters. What's insoluble? Now, everything dissolves in everything to some extent. So it's a bit misleading to say, oh, this is a one or a zero. It's, it's either yes or no. Everything dissolves to some extent, but what we say is insoluble is things that are going to be less than a tenth of a gram per hundred milliliters. In between that, we could say slightly, or sometimes they say partially, slightly soluble. And that's in between those two thresholds. This would mean it's in between 0.1 gram and one gram per 100 milliliters. Fair enough? Now, what we're gonna do is talk about trying to take every ionic compound in the universe and figure out if it's soluble or not. So, I've got some Epsom salts. Hey, maybe you can even read, probably not, right there. Yeah, yeah. Magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate. What is that? That is Mg magnesium. MgSO4. Solid. And let's say we don't know which of the three this is. Well, every chemistry, general chemistry textbook has some version of this. The solubility rules. So I'm gonna, this particular table is broken up into two parts. So I'm going to address the top part first, then the bottom part, because I came with props, y'all. One of the things I brought was some Epsom salts, that is magnesium sulfate. So now let's just go kind of looking around. Here's some positive ions, and da, 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 you get down to the bottom. Salts of sulfate. That would include magnesium sulfate. This particular table says soluble combinations and then insoluble combinations. So in order to be soluble or insoluble, it's gonna have a positive ion and a negative ion. So here it says uh, sulfate, insoluble combinations, strontium, barium, lead. Do you have to memorize this stuff? Well, if you have me in your class, no. I don't think it's worthwhile memorizing this stuff. Maybe if you have an instructor that, that makes you do that, I don't know, they might just want you to suffer. I don't know what's going on. But according to this, everything in the universe that is not strontium, barium, or lead is soluble in water. So let's put that to the test. Now remember, even, even though it may be soluble, I can still exceed the solubility limit of how many grams per 100 milliliters. It's gotta be greater than one. 
So here's the test. Oh, it's got fragrance in it, folks. Okay, there's the magnesium sulfate. I'm trying to, there. All right. And then I added that, and according to the chart, it should be soluble. And you say, hey, it didn't dissolve. Okay, I didn't stir it yet with this pen top, which is not an appropriate lab tool. But you can see that for the most part, that is dissolving in water. And you know what? I probably have less than 100 milliliters, and I probably have uh, more than a gram. And so a whole heck of a lot of that, and I'm actually going to let it sit there where I talk some more, is going to dissolve in water. So uh, let's come back to that in a little bit. So if we looked at NaCl, which is where we were talking about, you know, salt dissolves in water, right? Where's salt? Well, you can actually determine that from this chart in two places. You can go and you can say, hey, there's chloride. What's, an, uh, what's soluble with chloride? Everything that ain't silver, mercury, or lead. So uh, therefore, sodium is not one of these. It also says here, all salts of sodium, potassium, rubidium. It turns out that everything in group one is very soluble. And so, you know, here's your Na plus insoluble combinations, nothing. Everything is soluble with sodium. So you can pair any negative ion with sodium and it will dissolve. So you got this chart here. There's all sorts of ions that, this is one of the reasons I tell my students like, hey, look, you ever forget the ion charge? Well, you should never do it because you can prove to yourself the strontium is a plus two by looking at a periodic table, but you got extra reminders with this, with this, uh, with this little uh, chart here. So, so uh, back to uh, update here. Our magnesium sulfate is almost completely dissolved. I'm not, I'm just letting it sit there. Let's talk about something that isn't soluble in water. Down at the bottom of this chart, which we are going to use, so, you know, get yourself a chart. It, every textbook has one. And look, and basically it's saying the same thing. This one's exceptionally simple because it doesn't include things that are partially soluble. So some of them are more involved. This is basically everything that's insoluble or soluble. And remember, that means what side of point of one gram per 100 milliliters it is. So it's, it fits on a page, but it is sort of making the universe seem simpler than it is. Okay, there are some negative ions that are typically more insoluble with other combinations of positive ions than not. So you notice group one cations, that means sodium. Remember I said that the group one, they're very soluble. So no matter what you pair with group one, even if it's these ions, it's going to be soluble. But if uh, you were to take calcium carbonate, let's say that's the next thing we want to talk about. Calcium carbonate. We don't know if that's soluble in water or not. And we're gonna go look it up. So we would go and we'd see that calcium is not really included in the top except for a few exceptions. And you would not see carbonate in here. And that's because these negative ions are very soluble compared to these ones here. Now, if you're, a, if you're taking geology, you might say calcium carbonate, that's limestone. And so that, that doesn't dissolve very well in water at all. Um, and you can tell, here's carbonate, exceptions, everything in group one and ammonium ion, but not calcium. So this actually says that the exception of being insoluble means that these things do dissolve and everything else don't. So you got a portion of this table that says this is the stuff that mostly dissolves these things. Here's the exceptions. This is the part of the table where these things don't dissolve. So carbonates are not as soluble as, say, nitrates. And so everything in the universe that's paired with a with a, calcium, or with a uh, carbonate is going to be insoluble unless it's a sodium, uh, lithium, potassium, an ammonium, that sort of thing. Okay, you're probably saying, hey, put it to the test, Mike. Let's see. I brought with me some calcium carbonate, and it's in a special container that we call in science an egg. All right, and you all know that if I put that egg in water and I can spin it around so you know there ain't no fancy trickery going on, that thing ain't gonna dissolve in water. You can dissolve it in acid, 
Put it in vinegar, different ball game. But today we're talking about what dissolves in water and what doesn't. And so let's go take our magnesium sulfate and we'll talk about how we write that. Because by the way, that did dissolve pretty much all of it's gone. So once again, how do we symbolize what's going on when magnesium sulfate dissolves in water? You have two ways to do it depending on what your goals are. If the goals are to be short about it, you just say MgSO4 aqueous. Later, we're gonna talk, and this is the molecular way of describing it. That's the molecular form. Next time, we're going to need to be more specific, and we're going to be able to need to know what are the ions that are truly formed. And then this is the part where you can kind of get away with not having to look at the chart even, because you know that magnesium's in group two, and according to the octet rule, that always makes a plus two. Therefore, even if you don't remember what a sulfate is, you gotta know that it is. And sulfate is SO4 two minus. And so this is the ionic form the ionic way to describe things. And so that's where we're headed next. This is an electrolyte because those ions will move around. And then we would just say, uh, if you had calcium carbonate and you put it in water, nothing would happen. Sometimes that's the result. But next time, a little foreshadowing coming from Mike, if you were to take calcium and carbonate and they were in separate containers with separate compounds, you would get it to be insoluble, and that was what we call, that's what we call a precipitation. Precipitation is when something is not soluble. And so that's where we're going next, precipitation reactions. But now, one of your best friends, besides your periodic table, is your solubility chart. Solubility rules, they call it, or chart. And so we will be depending on that heavily next time. So until then, see you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.